Next, I want to go over the logic of reincarnation, or better yet, the illogic of it. I want to explain why I think reincarnation is a bad thing at the end of the day. What I want to do is play out the rationality of reincarnation and let the conclusions speak for themselves. So as we went over before, reincarnation works with karma, right? Your past lives of goodness or badness affects the quality and position of your next incarnation. And the goal is to achieve perfection so your spiritual evolution is complete and you achieve nirvana or ascend as an ascended master as some believe. So think about this for just a second. If the law of karma says that we work off the debt from our previous life, and the life that we're living right now is a life that we, in essence, chose to help work off that said karma, then led to its logical conclusion, then everybody in the world and who has ever lived is living the life that they chose and deserve. From the millionaire in the mansion to the poor, suffering, and disabled of all ages. This is the complete opposite of what Jesus taught about grace. This is basically a works-based theology taken to an extreme. And furthermore, I mentioned before about the issue of messing up someone's karma. This is actually a big problem in societies where they teach karma as it's supposed to be defined. Caste systems are a huge problem in these societies because to them, living the belief of karma out, then that means the rich and poor, healthy and suffering alike are getting what they deserve. If you help someone in need, in this view, you're actually hurting their karmic cycle if you help them. Why help people who are suffering at all? Why alleviate any pain or help the impoverished? They chose this. Now back off. They need to climb that spiritual ladder. So if you help them, you are interfering with this cosmic cycle and can actually end up hurting your own karma as well. This creates a huge problem with the problem of evil. When we went over the scripture in John 9, where Jesus heals the blind man, that's also another considerable issue that people just gloss over. They're using it as a verse to show reincarnation is true, but why ignore the natural conclusion that can't be ignored if they're going to draw that from this text, that this seemingly innocent man deserved what he got? This is not a good thing and does nothing to solve the problem of evil, but collectively puts the blame back on us. Karma says that there is no unjust suffering. So this means that whoever you are watching, the pain that you're going through right now, maybe you're chronically ill. Maybe you've experienced abuse, death, and suffering. Whatever it is, if this belief is true, then in essence, they're saying you deserved and asked for this. All I can say is thank God for the cross. Thank God that Jesus took our sins because we have a God that's personal and cares about you and your suffering to the point that he became his own creation and actually did something about it. He became the solution to the problem of evil. The cross is the solution to the problem of evil. Also, speaking of the cross, here's the logical issue of Jesus dying in the first place. If Jesus is supposedly a reincarnated Buddha, has worked off his karma, then that means he had no previous karma to atone for, at least not enough to deserve such a torture. So by that logic, what in the world did he do to deserve brutal torture and death? He literally didn't deserve that. So the logic falls short on that account as well. Now, some people redefine karma and reincarnation, especially here in the West, there's different variations of this, and a lot of pop culture is so quick to say that karma will come back to them, yet they actually don't think of the consequences of karma itself if it's a universal law. I mean, we've definitely westernized this, guys. I mean, we have wrestlers and coffee shops named after karma. I mean, I think there's even a credit card company with the name Credit Karma or something like that. It's trendy. 
So some people try to separate karma from reincarnation, but if someone even has a light understanding of reincarnation, then that means karma comes along with it. I mean, how you get reincarnated depends on your perfect karma. Who can do this? <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, this is impossible. That's terrible news. One lifetime isn't even enough to pay for all our sins. You must come back indefinitely to shed your bad karma. Like guys, really, if that's true, who needs help when you have reincarnation? The Bible says that there is no way to earn your salvation. And this is where the rubber meets the road for a lot of people. This is absolutely contrary to the teaching of grace. It fundamentally contradicts the central message that Jesus died for our sins once and for all. Sometimes it comes down to just simply recognizing the fact that you can't save yourself no matter what you do. That's exactly the point. <laughs> this is exactly why Jesus came to do what he did. And the problem is that people don't see their need for salvation.